want to share with y'all some things you may not know about what's happening in the North Carolina mountains in the aftermath of Helene. Here's number one. If you have friends or family that are headed into the mountains or who live there, the looting has picked up major steam. I was advised yesterday by a county sheriff to make sure that anybody out and about is carrying, and in his words, carrying with the safety off. There are very aggressive people out there, and I'm just going to go ahead and say this. It's not because they're necessarily awful. They're desperate. Desperate people do desperate things, y'all. And why are they desperate? Because there's no water in some of these communities. We have neighbors in North Carolina with no water. And all I can say is this. The government ain't coming to save you. Not now, not ever, because they don't care about you, the people, anymore. It is the citizens who are going to have to step it up. Now, I got to tell y'all, I was floored yesterday by how my community, which is a little over an hour away from the affected areas, showed up at donation sites with water and diapers and formula and some uh, liquid IV. I mean, y'all brought all kind of things, bleach, vinegar. You are ready to help, and we're going to take more donations today. Can I just remind y'all of something? You cannot eat money. You cannot drink money. So for those of y'all that thought money was your God, and by the way, that includes our freaking elected officials, it's not your God. I told my girlfriend this morning while we were talking about this during our run, I said, tell your children, she's got grown children, this is why you keep a stash of water on hand. This is why you keep a stash of food on hand. But for those of y'all that are not in affected areas, if you can take your donated items and send it to the mountains, then send it with a friend. Make sure you're sending truckloads so that we don't overload the roads because our first responders are overwhelmed. By the way, thank you, Governor DeSantis, for doing more for North Carolina than North Carolina's governor has. I'm very grateful for your National Guard because we have to help each other, y'all. And I'm going to tell you something. If you will share this with somebody who doesn't know what's happening in North Carolina, they need to know. They need to know that there are entire towns gone. Chimney Rock is gone. A beautiful town. Swannanoa, gone. Montreat, gone. Other towns damaged beyond repair. That means our geography has changed. Our culture is at risk. But most importantly, our people, our generational people have lost their generational homes. This ain't about your granite countertops anymore. Listen, y'all, listen. Tell somebody how they can help. I am but one resource. There are people I know all over North and South Carolina that have been gathering up goods and trucks. Somebody as far away as Massachusetts putting a truck together. Let me know. I can connect you to where to take things. The Baptists are doing a great job out of Boone. Samaritan's Purse is on the ground. I trust those two organizations. I wish I had trust for more because I don't trust this government, but I trust the people of North Carolina. Y'all, the biggest thing you can do, pray. Pray right now. Pray fervently that people will turn their hearts back to God and pray for a head to protection around all those who have seen things they should never have to see. Now, this isn't a video I typically make. It's not going to be normal content moving forward. So this is probably going to be like a touch and go subject. I will every now and then make a video to raise awareness and to bring light to an issue. But like I'm just a typical commentary channel. I'm a toxic YouTuber. So <laughs> this isn't like I said, my normal content, but I feel like <clears throat> I'm grateful enough to have a platform where people listen and I wanted to make this video today because I feel like it's very important to bring awareness to this. I'm sure by now everybody's aware of this hurricane and um, just very briefly for those who are unfamiliar who don't live in these areas that were affected or even in the surrounding areas, I want to give y'all just a really brief timeline and breakdown of the hurricane and the states that were affected. Now, on um, September 24th of this year, um, that's when Helene was pointed out as that tropical storm off the northeast coast of Cuba, and that caused massive flooding and mudslides to, mudslides to the western part of Cuba. And it was on this time, too, as well, on 924, where um, DeSantis, the government or the governor of Florida, ended up issuing that evac orders to. 61 of the 62 Florida counties, okay, and th they noticed that this was going to be catastrophic damage, just the way that it was intensifying. Again, at this time, it was just a tropical storm, but by the time it hit and made landfall, it was a Category 4. Now, 
Georgia's governor as well, Kemp, ended up doing this, and he issued for 159 of the 159 counties of Georgia to be ready for evacuation and to stay on call with the notices for that. Now, it was September 25th when Helene was notified to be a Cat 1, a Category 1 hurricane, and it flooded parts of Cancun. Now, as it moved northern through those waters of the Gulf Coast, those warm waters helped to intensify the storm. So it went from a Cat 1 to a Cat 2 to Cat 3, and eventually did make it to that Category 4 storm. Now, on 926 or September 26, that's whenever Helene did those jumps to those categories. So the National Hurricane Center had issued catastrophic wind and storm surge um, warnings to those who were in the path of it, basically there for that Florida bend. And, um, you know, it, it was left, it was life threatening storm surges that were being issued, life threatening wind. Now this was around the same time it made landfall and it made landfall in Keaton beach, Florida at around 11, 10 AM. And it, absolutely devastated Keaton Beach. Now, official officials had claimed in Florida that if you are ignoring those evac warnings and you're not evacuating um, to get a permanent marker, a dark permanent marker, and write on your arm, your name, your address, anything to identify you because they presumed you weren't going to make it through this, okay? And um, on September 27th, that's whenever the coastal communities were just completely wiped out. And the 27th of September is when we really got to see in full the damage that was being done. Now, I live in Georgia, and I was very fortunate because this storm ended up downgrading to a tropical storm once again. And I say I'm fortunate because even though it missed my the, the town I live in, it obliterated everything in its path moving into those Carolinas <clears throat> and as it made its way to Tennessee. Now, I just want to briefly say anybody in Asheville, North Carolina, and those surrounding counties got the real brunt end of the storm. And I, you know, my heart, I can't tell y'all how much it really goes out to y'all and y'all's families during this time. Now, what's been frustrating me about this um, from the things I've been seeing, things I've been reading, is basically we're short on help, but we're not short on help. And let me clarify that for those who are like, what the fuck does that mean to be short on help, but not short on help? Um... We have help on the ground. We have, there's helicopters and there's people ready to utilize them. But they're not being given the proper permission to, the proper permission to. As of right now that I'm filming this, I have not had an update on whether or not they were given permission to actually utilize those choppers and put them in the sky so that they can do rescues via the air. Um, now, there were thousands and thousands of rescues being done via the floodwaters, via boat. But at the same time, y'all, there are so many people in the mountains and areas like that that need air rescue. Now, right now, you do have helicopters out there that are government marked that are trying to help, but we don't have that many of them. And the issue with that is because the majority of these helicopters that are out there can't be utilized due to the fact that they haven't been given that proper permission to put those choppers in the sky. Now, there's a lot of civilians out there with personal helicopters and personal planes that are out there trying their best to do rescue attempts, but they're very limited. And there was actually a report that a local firefighter had told a civilian with a personal helicopter he would end up being arrested if he kept trying to go out on rescues. Now, I want to play all this video. We're going to react to two or three of them. We're going to talk about it. But this video really got to me. So I want to play it with y'all, and I want to get y'all's thoughts and opinions about it in the comment section. So let's dive right into it. It's Jonathan Howard. I'm a member of the Florida State Guard Special Missions Unit. And I'm also up here with Aerial Recovery, a nonprofit. I came up here on Sunday with Aerial Recovery before we even got activated. We flew up here, and then we got activated, which is great. I have my team up here working as well. Here's the problem. I'm going to tell you everything that's happening from the ground, what I'm actually seeing, because what they're telling you is complete bull on the news, and these politicians don't have a clue and they're lying. Now, I'll say this now, I'll say it at the end of the video. The only thing I need from this video is helicopters. If I have helicopters, I can save lives. Without helicopters, I can't reach these people. It doesn't matter how many chainsaws and trucks I got, I can't get to them. They're 10 miles in, 20 miles, 40 miles in the mountains. There's no way to get with them or even communicate with them. I am literally flying around in a civilian helicopter looking for SOS messages carved in the mud or painted on the ground and we're dropping down and saving them. What got me fired up about this was yesterday, 
me and my team did the rescue of that 11 day year old baby and all these government officials and social media they're showing that video that pictures and video of that rescue and claiming that like they have some like government helped with that and i mean it even usa i think it was usa today wrote an article about it saying it was a florida national guard that went and got it like with a helicopter no it was me my buddy charlie and a civilian named zeb with his own personal helicopter out of wilmington north carolina like without that civilian that baby would be dead and the old lady we went and rescued after that she'd be dead too because she had one day left of oxygen that no one was going to go get them i will tell you when we go up in the air i probably see 40 civilian helicopters and i might see two blackhawks national guard military whatever they are that's it no one's out there doing rescues i have my entire team up here from florida right now and they have no ability to go rescue these people other than what they can drive to and the people that are in dire need they're out in the mountains they are completely cut off everybody wants to pretend like they're being the hero while these people are literally fucking dying in the mountains and these people like i'm saying these people are limited medication they're running out of oxygen and there's no one going to get them the most effective way i have found to go find these people is by getting in a helicopter and flying down the rivers and roads and looking for SOS messages or people waving us down. And then we drop down and get them. We have all these people here. We have law enforcement, we have state guard, national guard. They have no way to go get these people. Yesterday when I was at the Asheville airport refueling, which by the way, the civilian is paying all this out of his own pocket. He's not even looking for a reimbursement. I think we did four refuelings yesterday. And that was like just in half a day's work. We're in Asheville, and I saw two Air Force Helicopter 60s, and I knew they were PJs just looking at them. And I went up to them, like, hey, guys, like, what are y'all doing? And, like, this is what you need to be doing, this, 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 this is how I'm finding people. And they're like, we can't go. We're waiting on Title 10 orders. And I'm like, what? They just, they can't get any authority. There's military helicopters all over here sitting on the ground, and they can't do nothing. Even my JSOC boys in Fayetteville, they can't get orders to come out here. It is just the most disgusting thing, and they're killing these people. And I don't know why they're doing it. I don't know what kind of conspiracy. I've heard so many things, whatever you want to come up with, but they are literally allowing these people to f die in the mountains right now because we can't get helicopters. They got money for everything else in the f world right now, but if they could just get us helicopters, we could fly out there and rescue these people. So I hope this video goes viral. I hope these politicians get fired. I hope people get pissed off. Now... To finish out this video with my thoughts and opinions really quickly, I just want to say I'm not, I'm just a dumbass, okay? I'm just a YouTuber. I, I don't understand, like, the pretty terminology he was using for these helicopters, what a, the Black Hawk is, but he was saying they're government helicopters, like, they're there to help. But why the government hasn't ordered them to actually get off their asses and help is, like, very beyond me. And it's not like they don't want to help. They're there ready to go. They just have not received the proper orders to do so and that to me is so mind-boggling because it's not even like we have time to start petitions to get these helicopters off the ground we don't have time to react because there's people quite literally in the mountain region right now and other surrounding surrounded there's people everywhere right now who have been in these affected areas who have lost everything and they're still waiting for rescue um there's people riding in the mud with sticks sos there's people doing what they can they're spray painting sheets and spray painting what they can just to put hey we're here sos come help us and it's really infuriating knowing that there are people out there who do need medication there's children out there who need formula diapers you need water for those babies you need water for your elderly there's elderly who can't walk especially those who are in this mountain mountainous region mountains are already hard to navigate and Given the fact that most mountains, you just have one little road, you know, going where you need to go up the mountain. It's not like you have highways and road systems set up on the side of a mountain. It's typically just a dirt or gravel road, one road taking you where you need to go, and there's no other shortcuts or ways around it. It's already hard to navigate in the mountains, but imagine needing your oxygen tube to come down with you. Imagine being elderly, not being able to navigate the terrain, especially not just because it's a mountainous region, and they're already hard to navigate. You're tripping over sticks and twigs and bumping your toes on rocks but now you have to deal with that terrain after the brute force of a hurricane just just hit it now i know the government is trying 
I'm not saying they're not. I'm just saying I'm very frustrated by the fact that there is active helicopters, National Guard on the ground, who wasn't given proper permission to actually help. They're there to help and they're not given permission to actually go out and do their jobs and the whole reason why they're there. And I'm not saying that's all of them. I know there's a lot of people out there hands on trying to help, but this whole situation, it just totally infuriates me. So I wanted to make a video about this and talk about it and possibly just spread a little bit of awareness for this subject right now. I don't know really what else I can do in this situation other than continue to buy and ship out supplies that can help people. But I figured if I can make this video and bring a little bit more awareness to it, there would be extra hands on deck and extra people aware of the severity of this. Again, I'm not a professional. I'm just somebody who went through this hurricane and we were fortunate enough to not have storm damage. We were fortunate enough to not have lost our home. We still have our family, our lives, our pets. We have a house to come back to. And that's more than you can even imagine having during a situation like this whenever you see your neighbors. And just a couple houses down the road from me, they lost their home. A couple more houses down, tree fell on it. They lost their home. You know, it's just, we're very, very fortunate. But there's so many families right now who are very unfortunate and I just wanted to make this video because with the little platform that I do have, I like to think that I can put these messages out there every now and then when they do need to be talked about or do there needs to be more awareness brought to it. So that's what I'm hoping to do with this video today. And for those of you who weren't aware with how severe that this storm actually was, maybe now you have a better understanding. And to all those families who were for fortunate enough to not be anywhere near this hurricane, who weren't affected by this, maybe now you have a better understanding of what's truly going on behind the scenes of not receiving proper help. They need more hands on deck with this. They need the proper permissions. The government needs to issue those proper permissions so people can actually go out there and help people. So any way anybody can donate to these organizations. I know Ryan Hall has the all squad that you can donate to. I'm going to be leaving his organization, Max Velocity's organization. I'm also going to be leaving the Samaritan's Purse organization in the description box and the comment section down below and a pinned comment. So y'all can feel free to donate to any of these organizations that I trust, that Southerners trust to actually help get shit done. <laughs> Again, I'm going to be linking those three organizations in the description box and the comment section down below. Feel free to go check them out. And if you, again, were in an area that was affected and you have even a dollar to donate to those charities who are actively on the ground trying to make these situations better and trying to help people out of this situation, um, that would be incredible. So again, feel free to go check them out and do that. But also, if you aren't aware of how severe the storm was and how tragic it was I want everybody to educate themselves further on the situation because even though it wasn't you today it could be you a different day so any way that you could watch these videos and better prepare in the future for if this would happen to you what do you need look at the aftermath the devastation and just think of ways that you could have stock up possibly to avoid situations like this but with that being said y'all I'm gonna wrap this video up like I said it isn't one that I typically make but I found what I've been seeing to be very frustrating emotionally and challenging physically because I personally cannot go out there and jump off a helicopter to rescue people. So I'm hoping that we can all raise awareness on the situation together and get more helicopters and more resources out there for everybody who was directly affected by this storm. So with that being said, I'm going to go ahead and wrap this video up. I'm sorry I'm not in like my happy, peppy, normal go happy, lucky, whatever the saying is, self. I'm just very frustrated and truly my, my gut is just wrenching for all these families right now who quite literally don't have anything to go back to and are currently stuck and needing rescue and still on rooftops. So with that being said, y'all, yeah, I'm going to wrap this up and I'll catch y'all in the next damn video.